The Life of Elizabeth Leonis, The Seven Deadly Sins. Elizabeth Leonis is the third adoptive princess of the Kingdom of Leonis, the 107th and current incarnation of the goddess Elizabeth, and the lover of Meliodas, captain of the Seven Deadly Sins. She's the deuteragonist of the series. Originally an alleged survivor of Danaphor's destruction, Elizabeth was adopted and raised by King Bartra Leonis. After the Holy Knights rebel, she sets off on a journey to find the Seven Deadly Sins, becoming a waitress for Meliodas' tavern, the Boar Hat. She later awakens to her power as a goddess and becomes the Seven Deadly Sins' prominent ally, participating in their battles against the Ten Commandments and later the Demon Clan in the New Holy War. Welcome to the Imagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Elizabeth Leonis. Before we begin, we publish a new video almost every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi stretch reaches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Elizabeth is one of the many reincarnations of the goddess Elizabeth, having been reincarnated 107 times since the times of the Holy War. She was reincarnated as a newborn infant as soon as her previous life, Liz, had died during the destruction of Danaphor. Her lover, Meliodas, approached her dying mother, who entrusted him with her daughter, and then left the destroyed kingdom with her and the Dragon Handle, both being keys to the revival of the Demon Clan. The couple was found by King Bartra Leonis and the Great Holy Knight of Leonis, Zaratras. Meliodas was very protective of her at first, and was still hurt over losing Liz, but eventually left Elizabeth in Bartra and his wife Carolyn's care, Bartra predicting the event and growing quite attached to the baby and adopting her as their third child. During her time as a toddler, Elizabeth grew very close to Meliodas, who would act as her bodyguard and would miss him whenever he went on a mission. As she worried that he wouldn't come back, Meliodas promised that he would always return to her alive no matter what. As a child, Elizabeth would often play with Gilthunder, Hauser, and her adopted sisters, Veronica and Margaret. Her eldest sister gave her an earring containing the symbol of the royal family, which she treasures even now. Ten years before the start of the story, a six-year-old Elizabeth was injured when trying to help the Seven Deadly Sins escape the castle after they were cornered by the Holy Knights of Leonis, which nearly caused Meliodas to go berserk, but he was immediately stopped by Merlin, who knocked him out to avoid a disaster like Danaphor. This incident is the cause of the loss of her memories about Meliodas and the Sins. At one point, Elizabeth climbed a tall tree, leading to King Bartra attempting to climb it, but falling from its great height and getting badly injured. Only noticed by Margaret, the younger princess unknowingly used her hidden healing power to heal her father. After the Holy Knights staged the coup, Elizabeth followed her father's advice and escaped from the castle, clad in rusting armor, and began a journey to find the Seven Deadly Sins, the sole individuals she believed could match the Holy Knight's strength. By the time she had reached Canis Village, though, her armor had rusted and she was constantly disappearing and reappearing, repeating delirious-like mutterings of the Seven Deadly Sins, which had led the villagers to name her the Mysterious Rust Knight. Introduction Arc Elizabeth is first seen when she enters the Boar Hat, exhausted, clad in rusting armor, and muttering the Seven Deadly Sins. Because of rumors of the infamous Rust Knight, Elizabeth's armor having given her the epithet, she frightens the customers into fleeing. Meliodas confronts her. She then collapses due to exhaustion and is revealed to be female. Shortly after, Elizabeth wakes up and is asked the reason she's traveling by Meliodas. As she begins to reveal that she's searching for the Seven Deadly Sins, a few knights, informed by the villagers of the Rust Knight and believing him to be one of the Seven Deadly Sins, command him to come out. When Meliodas and Hawk stall them, Elizabeth escapes from the back door, with Hawk easily defeating the pursuing knights. Elizabeth continues, explaining to the two that her search for the Seven Deadly Sins was in order to defeat the Holy Knights, who, she informs them, had orchestrated a coup d'etat a few days ago, and have taken control of the kingdom. Abruptly, the portion of the cliff that they've been standing on is cut off by Twigo, who arrived as a reinforcement. After Meliodas rescues Elizabeth and Hawk, Twigo, upon noticing her earring, realizes that she's one of the three princesses of the kingdom and begins attacking her and Meliodas, planning to report their deaths as accidental. The young man saves her, and then he saves her again when she decides to surrender, not wanting to involve him in their matters. Just as Twigo's about to deal the final blow, Meliodas, smiling, reveals his name and identity as one of the Seven Deadly Sins, the Dragon Sin of Wrath. After easily defeating Twigo, he then offers for her to join him, which she happily accepts, for he also searches for his former comrades. Officially hired as a waitress in the Boar Hat, Elizabeth is given a new set of clothing. Curious, she questions Meliodas as to why he was labeled a criminal, doubting that he was a villain. He initially jokes, but in the end he doesn't answer her properly, something that becomes a bit of a theme for him. 
The two and Hawk soon reach Bernia, a town that is popular for its ale made from the river. However, they find that the river is dried up completely. Upon finding a large crowd of men trying to remove a sword after entering the town, it's revealed that a holy knight had sealed the river's underground water source with his sword the day before, preventing the creation of the ale, Bernia's primary source of income. While the townspeople try to remove the sword, a boy named Mead starts boasting about a friend of his who he claims is a deadly sin. However, his claims serve only to anger the villagers, who blame Mead for their crisis. Meliodas brings him to the boar hat to question him about his supposed friend. Elizabeth, having been told it was Mead who angered the Holy Knight into stopping the river, manages to get him to answer after telling him about her past. Hearing the story, Mead tells them the reason, also adding that his claim about his friend being a deadly sin was a lie. After Meliodas easily removes the Holy Knight, Gilth under sword, the villagers celebrate at the Boar Hat, where Elizabeth attempts her first time at being a waitress. She makes several mistakes along the way, and her frustration prompts her to run outside, crying. She's then found by Meliodas, who, after managing to encourage her, catches a spear which had been thrown at the town by Gilth under in a fortress a few miles away, and throws it back. After acknowledging that prolonging their stay would bring more danger to Bernia, the two decide to leave. Forest of White Dreams Arc after learning that even holy knights avoid the Forest of White Dreams near Bernia, she, Meliodas, and Hawk enter the forest, speculating that a deadly sin might be hiding there. After walking in the forest for more than three hours and losing their sense of direction, the three are suddenly surrounded by multiple copies of Hawk. Meliodas quickly defeats all of them, including the original, but then discovers copies of Elizabeth. After he successfully tricks and defeats them, they're shown to be the indigenous prankster imps and retreat towards the sleeping Deanne, inadvertently leading the three to her, apologizing for letting a holy knight come through, since they believe that Meliodas is a holy knight. After she wakes up, Deanne instantly grabs Meliodas, only to cuddle him when she realizes that he's her captain. When Elizabeth introduces herself to Deanne as traveling with Meliodas, Deanne jumps to the conclusion that she and Meliodas are a couple and throws a tantrum. Meliodas, after calming her down, proceeds to begin a discussion about the day the sins were framed for the Great Holy Knight's death. Meliodas informs them that he has almost no memories of that day, then narrates the only memories he has, which end with one of the deadly sins apologizing to him. This makes Elizabeth speculate about the existence of a traitor within the sins. Deanne then declares that she'll rejoin Meliodas. A few brief moments later, Hawk notices a giant thundercloud in the sky. A lightning bolt from it binds all of them, and the assailant is shown to be Gil Thunder. Elizabeth immediately recognizes him, explaining to Meliodas that he's a holy knight, very close to her father, and a brother figure to her. However, she quickly realizes his intentions, much to her shock. Gil Thunder unbinds her, and stating that she's insignificant, orders her to leave. She refuses, and asks him to release Meliodas and Deanne instead. When Gil Thunder kicks Hawk away, Elizabeth runs after the pig. Later, after Meliodas and Gil Thunder's battle, Deanne flings Gil Thunder out of the forest, and Meliodas, Hawk, Elizabeth, and Deanne leave the place. Meliodas decides their next destination is Baste Dungeon, where Bon is imprisoned. Elizabeth objects, pointing out his grave wound from the battle, though affirming the wound isn't major, he soon collapses. Baste Dungeon Arc Elizabeth, Deanne, and Hawk then travel to a town near Baste Dungeon called Dalmari to have Meliodas treated. The doctor, Dana, states that his patient being alive was a miracle in itself. Sometime afterwards, Deanne decides that she'll head to the dungeon on her own. When Elizabeth asks to accompany her, Deanne decides to head into the dungeon herself, retorting that Elizabeth would only be a hindrance. Elizabeth replies her desire to be of use, and that Meliodas was taking on more than he could handle. This angers Deanne, saying that Meliodas wasn't doing it for the princess alone, and that such was his usual personality. She continues, narrating the episode of her and her captain's first meeting, and his treatment of her at that time. Elizabeth declares her wishes of wanting to have strength. Deanne declares her own of wanting to be small. Abruptly, Hawk notices a huge swarm of poisonous insects flying toward Dalmari. After Deanne annihilates all of them, Elizabeth awes at her power, as Deanne leaps out of Dalmari and runs toward the dungeon, after handing Elizabeth the responsibility of taking care of Meliodas. Sometime afterward, she and Hawk watch Meliodas as Dana enters. Suddenly, a voice commends Dana for his hard work. To the shock of them both, Dana reveals that the medicine he had made Meliodas drink was actually a deadly poison. Golgis then appears behind Elizabeth, revealing himself to be the voice. He states that he's come to take Elizabeth and Meliodas' sword, and grabs the weapon. However, Meliodas is revealed to still be alive, but with his eyes now mysteriously being colored jet black, with a strange mark on his forehead. The powerful aura Meliodas is releasing frightens Golgius into fleeing. After Meliodas returns to normalcy, it's revealed that his wound is healed, much to everyone's surprise. The three of them then go on to chase Golgius and find him very soon. Despite him surrendering, Meliodas notices the blades he threw and blocks them. When Dana also finds Golgius, the latter kills the former for censoring their deal. 
Elizabeth runs toward the doctor as Meliodas blocks Golgias' attack on her. The three then escape while Meliodas protects Elizabeth from Golgias. They enter an old building where Elizabeth watches as Golgias falls for Meliodas' trap. After Golgias is defeated and sent flying into the street, the Holy Knight manages to flee on a horse. Just as Meliodas and Hawk decide to head for the Bastet dungeon, Elizabeth walks toward the dying Dana. When she cries for him, he explains that he only wanted to rescue his daughter, Senate, as his hand falls. Elizabeth, in sorrow, blames herself for his death. Meliodas replies that he understands her, but questions whether her resolve to protect the kingdom's citizens is weak. He, declaring that he would fulfill his promise to her even if he were to die, proceeds to give a speech. Later, Hawk and Meliodas leave Elizabeth and Delmari while heading to the dungeon, citing the danger that the Weird Fangs pose. However, she herself joins them, declaring that while she isn't a knight, she would keep fighting for the people of the kingdom even if Meliodas were to die, mirroring his prior statement. While walking, they encounter Deanne, who seems to have no memories of heading for the dungeon. Deanne now having joined them, Meliodas decides that rescuing Senate, Dana's daughter, would be their primary priority to Elizabeth's gladness. Suddenly, Deanne attacks Meliodas, having previously fallen for Ruin's illusion abilities. Meliodas, immediately realizing that Deanne was under an illusion, flees while carrying Elizabeth, with Hawk running behind them, and upon finding two civilians, one of whom is a young boy walking nearby, takes them along, since they'll be dragged into the battle if they don't. As they three and the two frightened civilians who are revealed to be shepherds from Dalmari Town hide, Meliodas also falls under Ruin's hypnosis when he tries to look at Deanne, which makes him see Ruin in her place, the same way she sees Ruin in his. Quickly noticing that Meliodas has also fallen for the trap, Elizabeth tries to escape with the Shepherds and Hawk, stating that they would die if the two deadly sins fight each other seriously. As the two deadly sins continue their battle, Elizabeth desperately yells for them to stop, which causes Deanne to regain her senses and memories. The young Shepherd who had met Deanne on her way to Baste goes towards her, only for her to be hypnotized again and to continue fighting Meliodas. Seeing the civilians frightened, Elizabeth declares that she'll put her life on the line to protect them. Hearing that, Frisia, testing Elizabeth's declaration, uses her bugs to attack the young boy, and taunts her as she hesitates. However, much to her surprise, Elizabeth willingly enters the tornado of insects, being injured in the process, and protects the boy. The child, however, replying that while her risking injury to protect a child was admirable, reality is harsh, reveals himself to be a disguised ruin under an illusion. As Elizabeth asks him to undo the hypnosis, he pulls her hair and knees her in the chest, and hits her head with the top of his staff when she manages to get up. Telling Frisia that nothing was better than the face of a young girl writhing in pain, Ruin, in commendation for her bravery, explains to Elizabeth that the source of his illusions was his staff's bell, only to find it had been removed by Elizabeth when she was hit with the top of the staff. He lashes out in anger, but before he can kill her, is stopped by Meliodas, who had regained his senses since the source of the hypnosis had been removed. Meliodas, telling the unconscious Elizabeth that he has accepted her resolution, then fights Ruin, soon defeating him. Deanne, having come to her senses as well, quickly defeats Frisia also, and although initially deciding to take Elizabeth to Dalmari in order to treat her severe injuries, then takes her to Baste Dungeon upon her own request, with the princess sleeping in the giant's bag. After the dungeon is destroyed, and everyone, including Bond, Senate, and all the other villagers imprisoned there, return to Dalmari Town, she's questioned by Deanne and Meliodas as to how she's feeling. At night during dinner, Elizabeth, bedridden due to her injuries, is formally introduced to Bon. As the party continues, Elizabeth wishes that the moment could last forever, stating that the events in Baste reminded her all the more of the Holy Knight's frightening abilities, and the fact that only the Seven Deadly Sins could match them. In response, Deanne replies that while she doesn't know and isn't interested in humans and human kingdoms, she wouldn't mind fighting for the princess since she was really cool that day and did have powers, the power to move her and Meliodas' hearts. She also asks her whether she could henceforth address her merely as Elizabeth instead of Princess, and then tells the young lady to address her as just Deanne. Sometime afterwards, she, along with the others, awe at the sky's shooting stars, and are later shown to be sleeping. Capital of the Dead Ark Three days later, and after Elizabeth's complete recovery, the Boar Hat and the group, now including Bon, leave Dalmari. As Meliodas decides upon their course, Elizabeth apologizes for her recovery having caused the delay, to which Deanne replies that she's too apologetic and questions her as to how she's feeling, with the princess answering that she's fine. After they arrive at the village that Meliodas states to be the closest to the capital of the dead, Elizabeth asks to help with waitressing, since she isn't bothered by her injuries anymore. Meliodas accepts, but warns her not to push herself very much, and then calls out, informing Bon the directions to the food storage room, only to discover that Bon's escaped, not wanting to cook food for the boar hat. Sometime afterward, Elizabeth questions Meliodas as to what kind of person King is, to which he replies that he's somewhat of a mascot or pet for the Seven Deadly Sins. As Meliodas finishes this yarn, Elizabeth states that King must have a very kind heart. After Bond's encountering of Ellen and her brother and his brief battle with King, Elizabeth is present when he feeds the two children in return for information regarding the location of the Capital of the Dead, 
and is shown to be surprised when they reveal that King has also been asking them the same, wanting to go there no matter what. When they go to the precise entrance to the capital, Elizabeth wonders if her desire to meet her mother, who passed away when she was young, will open the path, but realizes that it won't, since she doesn't have any actual memories with her mother. Suddenly, a great amount of flowers appear around the area they're in, whose petals, when Hawk tries to eat them, wither and then transport them to the capital, implying that someone among them has opened the path and shares a priceless memory with a deceased individual. As Elizabeth wonders if it was her desire to meet her mother that brought them there, Bond immediately leaves in someone's chase, with King, who had quickly entered the swirling petals that transported the group to the capital, in turn chasing Bond. As the four continue walking, Gila appears in front of them, having entered the capital of the dead by killing herself. As Gila unsheathes her rapier and unleashes a very powerful aura whose mere presence pushes Elizabeth and Hawk behind, Meliodas, sensing the danger she poses, instructs Hawk to escape as far as he can along with Elizabeth. As Hawk obliges with Elizabeth riding him, he states that his animal instinct had felt Gila to be more dangerous than Gil Thunder. After going some distance, he then says that they should be safe there, only for Meliodas to crash on one of the crystals that dot the capital of the dead nearby, and then instruct them to run even further away, and then Hawk does that. Sometime afterward, as Hawk and Elizabeth crash, the former stating that he's not able to run anymore due to exhaustion, Elizabeth finds King, and after introducing herself, informs him about Gila having arrived at the capital of the dead and attacking Meliodas and Deanne, and then also questions him about Bond's whereabouts. When he's reluctant to help in fighting the Holy Knight, Elizabeth, much to his surprise, instructs him to escape and states that she'll be borrowing his spear, which she has uh, a bit of difficulty with. As she says that she wants to be of use to Meliodas and Deanne, Hawk, overcoming this exhaustion, also helps her in lifting King's spear. Their determination soon convinces King, who then lifts the spear with his telekinetic powers and heads to the battlefield. After King and Gila's battle with the latter's defeat, Elizabeth and Hawk arrive at the battlefield. Elizabeth watches in shock as the Holy Knight rises from the debris and attacks King from the back, stating that even if he guards himself, he would not come out unscathed if he was attacked at close range. Just before her attack reaches King, however, Meliodas repels it back at her, the explosion's impact returning Gila back to the living world. Immediately as he does so, everyone starts disintegrating. After having returned to the living world, Elizabeth also wonders whose memories led them to the capital of the dead, only to be frightened at discovering Gila's half-dead body. Later, when King questions as to Elizabeth's relation with Meliodas, Meliodas initially jokes about them being a couple and then introduces her as the third princess of the kingdom. Surprised at knowing Elizabeth's status as princess, King, wanting to present himself better, transforms into a much older and fatter form. He then returns to his ordinary appearance upon being told to do so. She later praises King for having been able to defeat an opponent, Gila, whom Meliodas, Deanne, and Bon were struggling to fight, and watches King question his fellow sins about their sacred treasures. His irritated response to their answers, and him explaining the significance of the deadly sin sacred treasures to Hawk. As Meliodas and King discuss the Holy Knights, she questions the latter about her father and sisters, which he replies he doesn't know anything about, disappointing her. Visal Fight Festival Arc Later that night, Elizabeth is seen inside the Boar Hat's bedroom, and then, after Meliodas enters the room, nostalgically remembers her childhood, expressing her worries about her sisters and father, but is reassured by Meliodas that they're alright and will be rescued by them. The next day, the group reaches the town of Visal that hosts an annual flea market in which a weapon that no one can use is said to be sold. Meliodas and Elizabeth speculate that said weapon could be a sacred treasure. Suddenly then, Deanne throws a temper tantrum at not being able to accompany the others into Visal. Elizabeth offers to join Deanne in house-sitting, and when Deanne replies that doing so would be boring, responds that she wants to have some girl talk once in a while, then heading into the forest with the giant to go gather ingredients for dinner. As they walk into the forest, Elizabeth finds a mushroom-like monster. Deanne, considering it an ingredient, tries to grab it. The creature, realizing that it's in danger, releases spores that shrink both Elizabeth and Deanne. Deanne ends up wearing Elizabeth's clothes and jewelry. And then, wanting to surprise Meliodas, Deanne enters the Visal Fight Festival under the name of Matrona, with the shrunken Elizabeth hiding in the shrunken Deanne's bosom. After Deanne wins the battle, King questions about how her body had become small and Elizabeth's whereabouts. In response to the last question, a shrunken Elizabeth from Deanne's bosom replies that she's right there. When Meliodas refuses Deanne's advances and then comforts her, Elizabeth appears to be dejected. Elizabeth then watches as Meliodas and Deanne fight, and questions the Sin's actions when they suddenly threaten the civilians to leave. She soon realizes the reasoning of the Sin's actions. The four had acted so that all of the civilians would evacuate. Acting by Meliodas's instructions, Hawk and Elizabeth hide. After King defeats Gila and Jericho, the two bring the unconscious Meliodas along. As Elizabeth hangs her pendant around the Sin's neck, the two are found by Veronica and Griamor, as Elizabeth returns to her normal size. Veronica notices the pendant on Meliodas's neck, in response to which Elizabeth explains that it was her who gave it to him. 
As Elizabeth refuses Veronica's pleading for her to return to the capital, Meliodas wakes and stops her, trying to convince Veronica that he'll protect Elizabeth. Veronica, however, triggers the pendant, which is actually a stone that affects demonic beings, to seal Meliodas. Elizabeth and Hawk are greatly shocked, as Veronica concludes that Meliodas is a monster, since the stone only affects demonic beings. Not believing her, Elizabeth continues to refuse to return to the capital and asks Veronica to undo the spell. As she keeps refusing, Veronica orders Griamor to form a barrier around Elizabeth and forcefully bring her back. Much to the three's surprise, however, Bond suddenly wakes from his unconsciousness and takes Veronica hostage. Bond is unable to do much due to Jericho and Gila's arrival and his quick defeat. Gila, noticing that her targets are under custody, extends her hand to help Elizabeth after Griamor releases his barrier around her. Veronica stops her, declaring that she will instead take Elizabeth. Gila agrees, and Veronica opposes again, dismisses the princess's authority, and threatens to use force. Immediately, Griamor surrounds Gila and Jericho in a barrier. While Griamor and Veronica's attention is focused on Jericho and Gila, Elizabeth manages to flee, with Veronica chasing. A few moments later, their footsteps trigger one of Gila's explosive mines. Veronica protects Elizabeth, but suffers fatal injuries herself. Elizabeth is in shock to see the sight of Veronica in near death and tells her to hold on, but Veronica asks Elizabeth if she's fine. Elizabeth tells Veronica that she was fine and told her that she always protected her even when they were four and not related by blood, but Veronica then told her that it didn't matter if they were related by blood. Elizabeth then told Veronica that she was sorry for telling her she hates her, but Veronica told Elizabeth that she loved her, to which Elizabeth tearfully says that she loves her too, and Veronica's response that she knew because they're sisters. Veronica then orders Griamor to protect Elizabeth and passes away. Due to Griamor's sadness over Veronica's death, Gila and Jericho are set free and attack Griamor. Gila then was planning to take Elizabeth, to which she keeps on calling for Meliodas to save them. The Goddess Amber was then glowing darker and breaks apart, which releases dark energy, and Meliodas is set free, but now with half of his body covered in the mysterious mark. Elizabeth then watches in shock at the sight of Meliodas' dark power, which he uses to defeat both Gila and Jericho with ease, and cut Bon in half. Meliodas then goes to see Elizabeth, who is being protected by Hawk at the moment. Meliodas then starts smelling Elizabeth, which confuses the girl. Meliodas then senses great power coming toward where King was fighting and uses some dark matter to form a wing and fly away, which leaves Elizabeth and Hawk confused. Elizabeth and Hawk watch in horror as Meliodas is defeated by Helbram. Bond grabs King and Elizabeth and tells them that they're retreating from the fight. Elizabeth refuses to retreat and leave Meliodas behind, but Bond grabs her and tells her it's too dangerous to be around and to run away from the fight. Later, Deanne finds Meliodas and ends up crushing Visal while Bond and the rest are running away. After Deanne saves Meliodas, Elizabeth and Hawk watch in shock what happened to Visal, to which Bond tells them it was too dangerous for them to stick around. Later, Elizabeth runs happily to the saved Meliodas, but Meliodas is then punched by Bond due to being cut in half by Meliodas. Elizabeth then walks to the wounded Meliodas and hugs him for being alright. Elizabeth then saw Griamor shielding the now dead Veronica. Griamor was crying due to failing to protect Veronica and didn't even try to protect Elizabeth. Elizabeth walks calmly toward Griamor and tells him about a lake called Pernes where Victoria and her used to play when they were kids, and told her to bury her there since it was a place her sister loved. Griamor is surprised to see how strong Elizabeth had become, and then reveals that Elizabeth is crying over her sister's death, but then states that she'll stop the Holy Knights for sure. Elizabeth is then shocked to be told that Meliodas' broken sword was stolen, but Meliodas acts like he doesn't care. Elizabeth tells him that the sword was something important to him and asked if it was really fine, to which Meliodas states that, no, it's not fine, and that it's a dire situation. This surprises Elizabeth, but then Meliodas states that if Elizabeth is alright, then losing the sword isn't a big deal, which made Elizabeth blush heavily. Elizabeth and the others treat each other's wounds and then head to the next location to find either another Deadly Sins member or a sacred treasure. Armor Giant Arc Later that day, Elizabeth gets sick and is resting at the Boar Hat until she overhears that Meliodas, Bun, and King were about to go to the Ordan Forest to find Gother, to which she requests that she wants to help, but Meliodas tells her that she should rest since she's sick, which makes her blush heavily, remembering what he told her in Visal, but Meliodas thought she was having a high fever. As the Deadly Sins head into the forest, Elizabeth wonders why she's blushing so much since Visal and is wondering if it's some kind of cold that she has. While Elizabeth starts to wonder this, the Deadly Sins come back, and she hears a knock at the door. Thinking it's a customer, she puts on her uniform and goes to greet them, but it turns out to be Kane from Visal. Kane is shocked to see Elizabeth and then yell out her name, thinking that Elizabeth is the Elizabeth from Meliodas' past. Elizabeth lets Kane in and offers him a drink while he talks about how much she looks and feels like Liz. Elizabeth asks if she was his daughter, but Kane said Liz was Meliodas' lover, which makes Elizabeth speechless, because she doesn't have memories of her previous lives. 
Kane talks about how Meliodas met and saved Liz, and she became closer to everyone in Danafor, even Meliodas. Kane then tells Elizabeth the reason Meliodas never uses a real sword, and that Liz offered him a sword, but regretted it since he believes that he could kill someone with a sword. Later, Kane then senses a large power coming from the forest, to which he told Elizabeth to stay behind, but Elizabeth grabs Liz's sword and runs into the forest where the power is coming from. Elizabeth manages to get to the battlefield and toss Meliodas Liz's sword and tells him that Liz doesn't want him to keep on fighting, but to keep on living, and tells him that she would share his sins, whatever they are. Meliodas takes Elizabeth's words and slays the beast. Elizabeth is introduced to Gother, and Elizabeth welcomes him and asks if she could use his strength, to which Gother refuses, much to her shock but tells her that this isn't the first time they've met, since she met all the deadly sins when she was a kid. To her surprise, she realizes that she met Meliodas before as well. Later during the party, Elizabeth asks Meliodas something. Gother then reveals to everyone that Elizabeth is in love with the captain, due to her voice seeming to be higher pitched and her heart beating faster when she's around Meliodas, much to her embarrassment. Kingdom Infiltration Arc after Meliodas mentions his plan to return to the kingdom of Leonis, and everyone refuses to come along to retrieve his sword, Meliodas goes under Elizabeth's skirt for comfort. Later, Meliodas explains the broken sword's origin and how it was one of the keys to revive the demon clan. Hawk wonders why they're after Elizabeth until a mysterious holy knight wielding a staff appears out of nowhere and reveals that Elizabeth is the last key to open the gate, and she teleports along with Elizabeth out of the bar. Elizabeth wonders where she is as she's transported to an unknown underground dungeon of Leonis. The unnamed Holy Knight appears and tells her that she's in Leonis. Before Elizabeth could reach out to her, the Holy Knight disappeared. Elizabeth hears a strange sound which scares her, but realizes Hawk was taken as well and that Hawk still needs to go to the toilet. I, gu I guess Hawk had to go to the bathroom before all this happened. Hawk smashes through the door, not wanting his pride to be ruined before Elizabeth, who tells Hawk that there's a toilet in their jail. Elizabeth and Hawk then try to escape until one of the guards finds them. Elizabeth then tells Hawk that they should hide, but Hawk attacks the guard, knocking him out cold. Elizabeth realizes that they're in an underground dungeon and calls out for her father and Margaret, and then hears Margaret's voice. Elizabeth goes to Margaret's jail and asks if she's alright, and Margaret claims that she's fine, but both she and King Leonis were very worried about Elizabeth. Elizabeth told them that she's fine, but starts to tear up, thinking about how Veronica started to blame herself for her death. Margaret tells Elizabeth that she knew about Veronica's death and she still couldn't believe it, but tells Elizabeth that she shouldn't be tormenting herself since Veronica wouldn't want that. Elizabeth calms down a bit and tells Margaret that they should escape together, but Vivian appears to stop them. Elizabeth is shocked and angry at the female Holy Knight and tells her to set Margaret free, but Vivian tells Elizabeth that Margaret chose to be imprisoned on her own free will, which Elizabeth doesn't believe. As the Holy Knight is about to take her to a safer location, Hawk stops Vivian with an attack and claims to protect the princess no matter what, but the Holy Knight, enraged, teleports Hawk off. Elizabeth is knocked out due to the shockwave of the teleports. Once Elizabeth wakes up, she finds herself no longer in the dungeon, but in a room with Vivian. Elizabeth asks what happened to Hawk and Margaret, but was surprised to see her father, King Leonis, in the same room. Elizabeth and her father embrace each other, overjoyed to see each other again. But Vivian tells them that it wouldn't be long until the ritual would start. Bartra asks Elizabeth if she's scared, but Elizabeth responds that she's not, since Meliodas will come to save her and her father. As the Deadly Sins and Holy Knights were teleported to the Royal Chamber thanks to Merlin, Elizabeth overhears and is happy to know that everyone is there, even Meliodas. Merlin then easily erases Perfect Cube from the chamber by using Absolute Cancel, which sets Elizabeth and Bartra free. Elizabeth quickly embraces Meliodas as she had missed him, to which Meliodas comforts her by touching her chest, which annoys Bartra. Meliodas points out that they've defeated Hendrickson and freed the king and asks Dreyfus what he would do now. As Dreyfus admits defeat and cries to know that Griamor is alive, Meliodas happily declares that everything is fixed. After the situation, King Bartra starts to cough blood, which alarms everyone until Merlin comes out and offers to heal him back in Camelot along with Arthur. Elizabeth begs Merlin to heal Bartra right away, which she agrees to, but before they go, Arthur goes to Meliodas and offers him the rank of Great Holy Knight of Camelot, which Meliodas agrees to, which makes Elizabeth depressed to hear. However, Meliodas decides to stay behind to restore the kingdom along with the boar hat. After Arthur and Merlin leave with her father, Elizabeth comes and asks Meliodas if he was really planning on leaving her someday, but before he could answer, the castle is cut in half, making everyone fall down. As everyone saves each other, they witness that the new generation are turning into hybrid demons, including Jericho and Gila. As Jericho transforms into a demon, Deanne and Gother keep Gila and Jericho calm, King fighting against the enslaved Helbrum. Meliodas and Gilthunder go off to fight Hendrickson, who summon Vivian to take Elizabeth and Margaret hostage. Hendrickson ends up stabbing Meliodas and Gilthunder when their backs are turned to Elizabeth's shock. 
Not wanting anyone to die for her, Elizabeth asks Hendrickson to take her for Meliodas' sake, and Meliodas tries to stop her, but Elizabeth smiles, saying that she wants to save Meliodas' life once in a while, until Bon and Hawk appear in the battlefield. As Hendrickson summons a Black Matter wing, Elizabeth tells Meliodas to think about their promise and was taken by Hendrickson to an unknown location to Meliodas' dismay. When the two land in Merlin's ruined castle due to Deanne's fight against the Holy Knights, Hendrickson says that the two are getting close, until Elizabeth grabs a dagger and offers to kill herself to stop the demons from rising. Hendrickson is unfazed by this and tries to get rid of the dagger. She's later swiftly rescued by the timely arrival of Meliodas and was taken to safety by Hawk while the Dragon Sin of Wrath immediately battled the Great Holy Knight. As the Holy Knights surround Merlin's old castle, Elizabeth is treated by a Holy Knight with healing powers as Margaret and Hawk stay by her side. Suddenly, Hendrickson reappears after gaining the power of the Grey Demon and instantaneously annihilates all of the Holy Knights. Quickly afterwards, Hendrickson incapacitates all of the Holy Knights and deadly sins except for Meliodas, who defends Elizabeth from the final attack. She looks up, observing as Meliodas collapses onto the floor. As Meliodas pleads for her to escape, the latter refuses, leading Hendrickson to unleash Dead End. When all hope is seemingly lost, Hawk suddenly appears to save the paralyzed Meliodas. Elizabeth immediately begs him to move out of the way, crying as the pig is consumed by the attack. Realizing that he's gone, she tries to recollect her memories with him, shedding tears and screaming painfully. The rest of the deadly sins are equally flabbergasted, until a pillar of light shines in the middle of the battlefield. Margaret reveals to Gilthunder of Elizabeth's incredible powers of healing mortal wounds, having saved the lives of both her father and sister in the past. Hendrickson is straight away annoyed, noticing that the blood of the druid mediums that flow through her is awakened. With her hair no longer covering her right eye, a mysterious symbol is observed together with a pair of wings. As Elizabeth stares at Hendrickson, she reveals that she's upset and disappointed at Hendrickson's actions, saying that her father had high hopes for him when he entered the rank of Great Holy Knight and wanted to know his reason for betrayal, to which Hendrickson says he did it to release the Demon Clan and summon the Dark Nebula to kill everyone, but Elizabeth unleashes her powers, which nearly covers Leonis in bright light which heals nearly everybody, including the Deadly Sins. But to Elizabeth's shock, she can't revive those who are already dead, like Hawk, which causes her to break down in tears and collapse into Margaret's arms. As Meliodas falls back down from his battle against Hendrickson, Elizabeth comes rushing to his side. As the two get closer, Bartra coughs and tells them that they should be kept separated as he returns from Camelot after being healed by Merlin. Meliodas and Elizabeth greet the two, and Bartra forgives the Holy Knights for their crime and clears the Deadly Sin's name. Elizabeth, however, is still depressed as Hawk is still dead from protecting Meliodas. For unknown reasons, the black matter on Hawk's body starts to fade, revealing that Hawk has been revived but shrunk into a smaller size. But this still brings great joy to the Deadly Sins, especially Bon. Meliodas then embraces the princess in return, ending their adventure in Leonis. Post-Kingdom Infiltration Arc As Leonis is being rebuilt, Elizabeth tells Hawk that the Deadly Sins and the latter are getting an award ceremony for their efforts, and Elizabeth wonders about Meliodas' new outfit, which he happily wore and planned on wearing from now on to her joy, as the rest of the Deadly Sins got new uniforms as well, except for Merlin. The Deadly Sins end up celebrating the festival while working in the boar hat along with everyone else. During the award ceremony, Elizabeth stands next to her father and is surprised when Meliodas objects to the award bestowment and calls out the Holy Knights who complain behind his back and have a voice in the matter, revealing three of the Pleiades of the Azure Sky. After her father reluctantly grants Death Pierce's request to battle the legendary Seven Deadly Sins as proof of their strength in their very own eyes, Elizabeth tries to protest, but nonetheless Meliodas faces Dogetto and wins. The next day, Elizabeth runs toward the Boar Hat while wearing a maid outfit and asks Meliodas if she could work there since they're going to Camelot on a mission by Bartra's orders. But Meliodas refuses to take her as her father would be mad for letting Elizabeth work as a waitress, but Elizabeth told them that she doesn't care and wanted to run the bar together with Meliodas as promised. Meliodas revealed that he didn't make a promise to Elizabeth like that, and since they saved the kingdom, there was no need for Elizabeth to work. When Elizabeth questions Meliodas being aloof towards her, he starts harassing her like usual to prove that he isn't being aloof, until Hawk comes in and ties him up. Elizabeth then comes across the shrunken Deanne, who had shrunk herself thanks to the minimum tablets Merlin made and the two chat. Deanne reveals that she was looking for King as he disappeared after the festival, and revealed that she was mad for leaving her the second time, which puzzles Elizabeth. As the two chat, Deanne asks Elizabeth if she loves Meliodas, and Elizabeth blushes, as usual, but admits that she does love him, but doesn't know how to tell him. Deanne begs Elizabeth to tell him, as she regrets not telling King how she feels, as she revealed her background of her and King. Deanne starts to shed tears, worried that King left forever without her telling him how she feels. Albion Arc 
While Deanne tries to cheer up Elizabeth, the two waitresses come across a confused and puzzled Zeal who doesn't even remember who he is. Deanne spots Gila and Gother who quickly rush over to help Zeal, but Gila doesn't even remember who her little brother is. A confrontation with Gother soon reveals that Gother had manipulated both siblings' memories. Gila's memory manipulation occurred during the battle between Bon and Meliodas. After coming to the conclusion that the feelings of love are what caused this change, Gother switches from studying friendship to love, using Gila as his makeshift lover. Gother attempts to convince Deanne that the memory manipulation was necessary as it's what helped suppress the demon blood within Gila at the time. Revealing that he has made Gila's memories much happier, Gother asks Deanne and Elizabeth which set of memories Gila would be happier with. Deanne disagrees with this, asking Elizabeth to go get Meliodas and Merlin. Gother attempts to stop Elizabeth, but is stopped in turn by Deanne. However, Elizabeth is soon knocked out cold by Gother's blackout and ends up dreaming of the time that she was on her quest to find the Deadly Sins and spots an older version of Meliodas. This dream ends when Meliodas wakes her up, worrying over the latter. Elizabeth and the others find Deanne winning her match against Gother, while Gother is sulking in defeat. After the short scuffle's been settled for now, with Gother returning Gila's old memories as well as Zeal's, including their breakup of their relationship, Meliodas and the others return to the bar, where Slater agrees to join them for a while, and Elizabeth wants to join, but Meliodas shuts her down coldly to avoid her getting hurt by the Ten Commandments to the displeasure of others. When Slater appears to comfort her, Elizabeth reveals that she understands the reason Meliodas is acting cold towards her, but she still wanted to be of use to him since he helps her so much. However, Merlin gets a call from Arthur, who's under attack from an Albion, and teleports to Camelot to battle the giant. After the giant golem is defeated, Elizabeth is amazed to see Meliodas' secret treasure, Lost Vein, and his ability to copy himself. However, while the group chats, it's revealed that Elizabeth was feeling disappointed that she couldn't do anything to help Meliodas and seems to have made peace with the fact that he doesn't really need her. A member of the Ten Commandments, Galand appears and easily destroys most of Camelot without the need of his magic. Meliodas is shocked to see him, and Galand reveals that he knew Meliodas and was surprised that he didn't age at all for the last 3,000 years, but still attacks him. Meliodas protects Elizabeth, but soon Elizabeth, Hawk, and Arthur are placed in the perfect cube and watch helplessly as the deadly sins are easily defeated and led to be killed by Galand until it was revealed to be an illusion by Gother. Istar Arc after the battle, Elizabeth looks after Meliodas as he's healing until he wakes up, and Elizabeth embraces him, telling him that she was worried. Elizabeth soon takes Meliodas to where the others are healing, and they're all saddened about losing to Galand. However, Meliodas soon lifts everyone's spirits by telling them to train more, and to get stronger, and to get a strategy. Even Arthur and Elizabeth have to awake their hidden powers as well, which Elizabeth agrees to having, acknowledging her lack of strength, saying that she'll do whatever it takes even if she's of no use right now. Meliodas believes the situation was so bad that they have to bring in Escanor, and later goes to check up on Deanne's health until King pops up to check up on her as well. When the three check Deanne, she reveals to have lost all of her memories to the point of meeting Meliodas for the first time. While Meliodas and the others talk about Deanne's memory loss, King keeps Deanne company until she starts to lose more memories and runs off. Gother soon reveals that he used Lost World on her to test if her feelings for King were stronger than she said. After King punches Gother, the others follow Deanne, who is heading to Megadozer until they're stopped by Monspeed's fireball, and Hawk Mama eats it to the others' surprise. When they couldn't sense Deanne's power level anymore, Meliodas believed that she was fine and that they should focus on their training until they meet her again. Meliodas decides that the first thing to do is to head to Istar, the home of the Druids, and the location of Meliodas' strength. While the Boar Hat travels to Istar, Merlin reveals the reason for her stealing Meliodas' power was because she couldn't control her emotions very well and nearly destroyed Leonis when a young girl got herself injured during the framing ten years ago, possibly being Elizabeth. Merlin then somehow stole Meliodas' strength and gave it to the Druids for safekeeping. Once they travel there, they're greeted by the head of the Druids, Jenna and Zaneri, along with their bodyguard, Theo. When they request them for training in Meliodas' strength, they agree to help out while Zaneri leads Meliodas and Elizabeth inside the castle to test them. Zaneri soon reveals to have feelings for Meliodas as she wants him to touch her and seems jealous of Elizabeth while Meliodas shows no interest in her. Zaneri then tests Meliodas by sending him through memory lane to the day Danifor was destroyed to see if he could control his emotion when Liz died. However, Meliodas repeats the day so many times he soon starts to lose it until he's reassured and comforted by Elizabeth, who's then scolded by Zaneri for not worrying about herself. After Zaneri tries to pull Meliodas out of his trial a second time, Elizabeth stands in her way and tells her to have faith in Meliodas, who passes the test to Zaneri's surprise. After Meliodas regains his strength and defeats Gilan in under 10 seconds, Elizabeth returns to the group to see how their training is going. Elizabeth also gets a new outfit for battle, as Zaneri believes it would be easier for her to move while Meliodas enjoys the outfit and leads to him poking Hauser's eye for ogling Elizabeth. 
When Elizabeth sees Hawk's new form, she's stunned and goes back to talking to Meliodas to Hawk's dismay, and leads Meliodas to ask her how her training is going. Elizabeth responds that she failed, to everyone's surprise. After everyone's training, the Deadly Sins decide to head out to stop the Ten Commandments and find Escanor. Before heading out, Meliodas cheers Elizabeth up for failing her trial by saying it's okay to fail as he failed the trial thousands of times and knows Elizabeth has some crazy power hidden. This quickly cheers her up and she promises to be more confident and to never complain about herself again. The Great Fight Festival Arc after Meliodas decides to enter the Visal Great Fight Festival arc, Elizabeth, along with Hawk, are separated from the group upon entering the maze. Not long after being separated, Elizabeth and Hawk meet with Deanne, who still has her memory loss due to Gother's interference. Elizabeth, relieved knowing Deanne's good condition, tells everyone from the Boar Hat that's worried about her. Deanne, who's lost her memory, instead shows hostility towards Elizabeth and doesn't trust any human. As Deanne advances alone, Elizabeth and Hawk follow her from behind. Deanne lets Elizabeth and Hawk walk in front of her until suddenly the ground begins to split into a deadly gap and almost make both Elizabeth and Hawk die if Deanne didn't catch them. Elizabeth thanks Deanne, and the three of them proceed together into a cave. Deanne, who doesn't know that there's a swamp inside the cave, is attacked by leeches. Elizabeth comes to the rescue, pulling all of the leeches off of Deanne's legs. From that point on, Deanne grows to trust Elizabeth, and thanks her for saving her earlier. Soon, Elizabeth, Deanne, and Hawk are ambushed by prankster imps who take the form of Meliodas. Hawk tries to ask questions that only the true Meliodas can answer, hoping that he's hiding among the fakes. Though after none of them get the answers right, Elizabeth and Hawk are terrified as they confirm that all of them are fakes and they launch attacks towards them. However, the prankster imps are defeated once again as Gilthunder and Hauser come to save Elizabeth and Deanne. Gilthunder says that he and Hauser immediately separated from the main group upon entering the maze. Suddenly, she can feel a faint presence of Meliodas across the thick layer of the maze's wall, saying to the others that Meliodas is waiting for her beyond the wall. Elizabeth is reunited with Meliodas after he and Bond destroy the wall that separated them. After Elizabeth and the others reach the center of Visal, Droll, a member of the Ten Commandments, along with Gloxinia, who created the festival, uses creation to mold the battlefield and organize the competitors into pairs. Surprisingly to Meliodas and Bon, Elizabeth is paired with Elaine and compete in the first battle against two Assassination Squad members, Tora and Jigumo. As the battle begins, Gloxinia tells the festival's rules to the participants, and one of them is that the participants are prohibited to leave the festival. Elizabeth shouts to the worried Meliodas that she and Elaine will be just fine, and he doesn't need to worry about her. Elizabeth is impressed at Elaine, who easily knocks their opponent out with just one move. She compliments Elaine, saying that Bond's most beloved person is just as amazing as Bond thinks. Elizabeth also says the reasons why she and the others had joined the group was to stop the awakening of the Ten Commandments and to taste the fun of the festival, much to Elaine's displease. In the middle of their conversation, Elizabeth and Elaine are attacked with smoke gas, which creates an advantage for Tora and Jigumo. As Jigumo poisons Elizabeth, Tora makes his movement to stab Elaine. However, Elaine already foresaw his action and immediately defeats him. Elizabeth shows no injury despite being poisoned by Jigumo earlier. Instead, she voluntarily heals Tora's wounds and ends the battle, saying to Elaine that she forgives them despite their intent to kill her earlier. However, Tora and Jigumo fall into a pit made by the Commandments for failing the match. At some point in the tournament, Escanor manages to heavily injure Droll and Gloxinia, leaving Meliodas to strike back as he planned. Droll soon takes all the participants as hostage with one of his techniques until Gilfrost teleports everyone except Meliodas safely back to Leona's castle. Elizabeth and the others watch the rest of the battle through a crystal ball, seeing how Meliodas has the upper hand until the rest of the Ten Commandments show up. After being cornered by the enemy, Meliodas is stabbed to death by Estorosa. Elizabeth then asks Gilfrost to teleport her there to confirm herself the fate of Meliodas. Seeing his lifeless body, she bursts into tears, begging Meliodas to open his eyes. Defensive Battle for Leonis Arc After one month, the Ten Commandments have taken over Britannia and have devoured many souls to regain their strength. While battles against the demons continue, Elizabeth ends up running the boar hat alongside Hawk. Elizabeth makes the bar into a safe place where knights or people running away from the demons can hide and relax for a while, even aiding a former enemy, Golgius, since Elizabeth believes it's what Meliodas would have done. It's revealed that Elizabeth had kept the dead body of Meliodas in their bed all healed up, as she believed Meliodas will wake up one day since she or Hawk couldn't find him in the capital of the dead. Until I read the end of that sentence, that was like a very weird thing to do, but I guess within the logic of this show, it's not completely weird. As they're closing up shop, a knight comes in going by the name of Silver, the same knight who entered the previous tournament, but soon reveals himself as Zaratras. After a meeting with his hosts, Zaratras uses a druid spell that allows Elizabeth, Hawk, and himself to see Meliodas' memories. 
There, Elizabeth sees herself as a newborn in Meliodas' arms soon after the destruction of Danafor. After learning of the union between her childhood and Meliodas, how the seven deadly sins were formed, and a conversation with Zaratras where Meliodas reveals to him a curse that prevents him from dying, her hope of seeing him alive again is relit when Meliodas says to her past self that he'll always come back to her alive. When Elizabeth decides to go to Leonis, Zaratras tries to persuade her otherwise, as the kingdom was being invaded by the Ten Commandments. However, Elizabeth affirms that it's her duty to protect the kingdom and its people, the symbol of the goddess appearing in her eye. There, the Ten Commandments, Derriere and Monspeed, notice them passing through a forest and stop them. When Derriere attempts to kill Zaratras, Elizabeth manages to use Ark to stop her, destroying one of Derriere's hands. There, Derriere tries to attack her, but a revived Meliodas protects Elizabeth from the Commandments' attack, and a relieved Elizabeth doesn't mind Meliodas groping her. After stopping the invasion of the Commandments, Meliodas tells Elizabeth about how he fears he'll turn back into the man he once was 3,000 years ago, so Elizabeth hugs and comforts him. Koran Ark after the Seven Deadly Sins reunite, Elizabeth is told by Deanne that she and King met someone who looked and sounded just like her. This starts to worry Elizabeth, as they also mention that this girl was with Meliodas back then. Elizabeth then confronts Meliodas about how she feels about all these different Elizabeths who look just like her and are linked with him. She asks him for the truth, but he says it's just a coincidence. Which seems like it would just make things more complicated for Meliodas, but whatever. This leaves her upset, as she knows that he's lying. She later goes to the Boar Hat where the rest of the team is. There she meets Hendrickson, who tells her that they need her help. Merlin, who has been attacked by the magic of Zeldris, is in a bad state, to the point where Hendrickson is incapable of saving her with his years worth of training druid magic. Elizabeth attempts to heal Merlin, which leaves Escanor shocked about her power, while Hendrickson states that the druid's power pales in comparison to Elizabeth's. She's then taken to a dark space where she meets Zeldris, who apathetically greets her and reveals Meliodas is his brother, and about her previous goddess status. When a confused Elizabeth says she's never met Zeldris, he amusingly calls her miserable woman and angrily accuses her of still corrupting his brother. Mortified by Zeldris's words, Elizabeth asks the meaning of them, and Zeldris reveals that her original self was cursed after her death to be reincarnated with all of her memories lost, and inevitably meeting Meliodas again. Happy, yet confused as to why Zeldris said she's causing Meliodas suffering, Elizabeth desperately tries to remember, and Zeldris restores her memories by force, telling her to remember everything and know the true depth of her currently unknown sin. Elizabeth later starts to remember some things from her past lives, which then causes both of her eyes to show the goddess symbol. She faints and is put to bed, where Merlin remarks that this is most likely an effect of Zeldris's magic. Meliodas states that it won't be long until she remembers everything, and that when she does, she'll die in three days because of the curse that was put on both of them. After the sins go to Korand, Elaine senses that Deanne is being possessed and hurries her way in to help, but then collapses. Then, Elizabeth suddenly turns up and helps her, much to Elaine's surprise, and tells her that she's coming along. When they arrive, both spring into action right away. After Elaine uses her powers to stop Deanne, Elizabeth uses the spell Let There Be Light to purify the giant. Elizabeth then uses her healing powers to instantly restore the wounds Deanne and King attained. Elaine then compliments Elizabeth's immense power and asks which Elizabeth she is now, and she responds with she's the Elizabeth from the Goddess Clan, but also Elizabeth, Princess of the Leonis Kingdom. She then compliments Merlin for becoming a full-grown woman and teases her, asking if she wants to refer to her as Big Sis like she used to. The discussion is cut short when Meliodas frees himself, unleashing his assault mode, resulting in him being reverted to his old self and begins a fierce fight with Escanor, as Elizabeth watches from the outside of the perfect cube. When the fight's over, Elizabeth immediately goes to a defeated Meliodas. Prelude to the New Holy War Arc Once in the Boar Hat, Meliodas suddenly wakes up, but is instantly incapacitated by Merlin. She wants to put him inside a perfect cube to be safe, but Elizabeth intervenes. With Merlin's refusal, Elizabeth then asks her to lock them both in, and that she'll try to stop the regression process. As everyone senses a dark presence, suddenly an old man appears in front of Meliodas, and Elizabeth claims that he's gonna kill her and rescue Meliodas. He uses Absolute Cancel to dispel the perfect cube. After the demon incapacitates Merlin using full counter over her magic seal, Deanne grabs Elizabeth and Meliodas while the old man is distracted. In that moment, Chandler catches up to them, only to find that Meliodas is finally awake. After claiming that he has a method for saving Elizabeth, Meliodas solemnly declares that the Seven Deadly Sins are now disbanded. Elizabeth tries to no avail to deter Meliodas of his plan to become the new Demon King. Then Elizabeth is taken by Meliodas along with Chandler to Camelot, where Zeldris is. They're received by Zeldris and Estorosa. 
Elizabeth recognizes the latter as the one who killed Meliodas. She gets as well the feeling that she's met him before. Esterosa, after seeing Elizabeth, claims that he knows her, even when this was their first meeting. Eventually, Meliodas angers both brothers, whom attack him and Elizabeth at once, but are quickly subdued by Meliodas. After some discussion, the brothers come to the decision to gather the missing commandments while Meliodas will stay there to protect Elizabeth. Once in a room by themselves, Elizabeth tries to convince Meliodas to return to the Seven Deadly Sins and find another way, but he refuses and states that this is the only way to keep his promise of breaking their curse. But Elizabeth says it makes no sense to do that if they're not going to be together, until Meliodas briefly changes back to normal and states his love for her. Elizabeth hugs him, declaring that all the Elizabeths always loved him by their own will, but Meliodas goes back into assault mode and states that he feels nothing, with the promise to her being the only thing he has left. Elizabeth then replies that she has a plan as well, a plan to work with the Seven Deadly Sins and stop Meliodas from becoming the new Demon King. He tries to make her desist, but Elizabeth slaps him with Ark, knocking him down while destroying the entire room in the process, and retreats back to the Sins' location. Once in the Boar Hat, Elizabeth briefly updates the situation to the Sins. After reassuring Deanne, who's sad over the prospect of Elizabeth dying due to the curse, she states that she'll stop Meliodas from becoming the Demon King even at the cost of her life, and asks the Sins to lend their strength. Right when Elizabeth and the Sins are back to Leonis, they're greeted by Bartra, who thanks them for saving the hostages. Bartra gets surprised after discovering the symbols in his daughter's eyes. Elizabeth says that she'll explain this to him later. In that moment, it's announced that Gilthunder, along with Dreyfus, Hendrickson, and Margaret, who's accompanied by two strangers, have arrived. Elizabeth immediately deduces that Margaret is not the only one they were looking at, and that someone has taken over Margaret's body. After they introduce themselves as representatives of the four archangels, Ludosiel charismatically requests for the sins and knights of Leonis to join them to kill Meliodas. Elizabeth refuses, saying that she doesn't want to kill Meliodas, she just wants to stop him from becoming the Demon King. Merlin intervenes, proclaiming Elizabeth to be the new de facto leader of the Sins, and that they'll accept any decision that she makes. Elizabeth decides that they need the help, then she and Ludosiel cross sword-like beams of light symbolizing their alliance. Elizabeth takes the king to the tree that she climbed up to the top of when she was younger to gain his attention. She reminded him of when he climbed up that tree and fell, it was what awakened her power for the first time in this lifetime. She explains who she truly is and the story with Meliodas and her battle against her mother and his father. Bartra cries that no one should have to suffer for their love. Elizabeth says she might not be a model daughter, but asks him to let her be his little daughter for a little while longer. Soon after, Arthur is brought back by Merlin from Camelot and asks Elizabeth to heal his wounds. However, Cusack controls his body due to his resonant ability and makes the king stab himself with Excalibur, much to Elizabeth and the Sin's horror. New Holy War Arc Elizabeth tries to tend to Arthur's wounds, but she says that she can't heal the wound as long as the sword is still in his body. Seeing Merlin in despair after Arthur's death, Elizabeth kisses her on the forehead using a spell on the mage, as her original incarnation from 3,000 years ago would do, putting her at ease. After that, they head out to a meeting with the Alliance. There, Elizabeth decides to be with the Sins on the Search and Destroy Force, in charge of destroying all the demon armies on the way to Camelot. After preparations have been done, Elizabeth is seen outside in her new outfit that Merlin made for her. She states that she senses a mass of demons coming in their direction, and that Meliodas must not get the last decree. Merlin reminds Elizabeth of how important her and Arthur's power awakening was in the war. She tells Elizabeth, nevertheless, that her power is essential to the battle. Elizabeth, alongside the rest of the Alliance, stands on the front lines of the battle, ready to confront the approaching demon army. As the fight rages on between the Search and Destroy force, Elizabeth watches as the combatants use the blessings they attain from Ludosiel to fight. After the battle ends, Death Pierce starts to tell everyone that the power of the blessing makes them invincible and that they can use it to beat the demons. Elizabeth tells him and everyone else not to rely on that temporary power. She explains the technique known as the Breath of Bless, also called Cheat Hope, pushes the person's magical and physical capabilities to their limits, but the person loses their feeling of pain and tiredness and will continue to fight to their deaths. Death Pierce tells her that she doesn't know what she's talking about, making Sariel intervene to tell him that he's actually the one who doesn't know anything. He explains that Elizabeth spent most of the battle talking to the demons and making them turn back around and avoid the fight altogether. Afterwards, a huge power of Ten Commandments level lands in the middle of the battlefield. To Elizabeth's surprise, it's Derriere. She realizes that Derriere has no intention of fighting and even tries to stop Death Pierce from attacking her. Derriere explains that Esterosa killed Monspeed. Esterosa, who was following her, arrives. As soon as he arrives, he locks Derriere and Elizabeth from the rest of the fighters in Evilhound. 
Once inside, he expresses his gratitude for seeing Elizabeth and that she escaped from Eliotis. He claims that he'll take Derriere's commandment and send her to where he sent Monspeed. Elizabeth concludes that he must be collecting the commandments for Meliodas to become the Demon King. Esterosa states that he's the one who plans to become the Demon King instead, which angers Elizabeth, so she uses Ark on him, destroying the barrier as well. As Esterosa tries to attack Elizabeth, she uses Jonah no Junon, a massive whale-like creature made of Ark, to consume the Hound whole while shielding Derriere from the shockwave, causing Derriere to comment that she really is the Goddess Elizabeth. Elizabeth worries about her friends, to which Derriere responds that the Purgatory Flame could not be extinguished unless it destroyed every flesh and bone. Yet Elizabeth managed it. To their surprise, they hear Deanne's voice, who lifts the earth, revealing everyone safe and sound. While Sariel and Tarmiel fight Esterosa, Derriere then asks Elizabeth if she knows how Monspeed felt about her, to which Elizabeth responds that she couldn't possibly know such details. But Elizabeth tells her that she and Monspeed are similar to her and Meliodas. She explains that she wants to do whatever she can to compensate for Meliodas' suffering and sacrifice. That maybe Derriere didn't know about what Monspeed wanted to say, but the important thing is how she feels. Sariel and Tarmiel return to the battlefield, announcing that they've defeated Esterosa, but immediately Esterosa shows up alive under a transformation. So, you know, they did a great job there. Derriere notices that he's already absorbed a decree and is also in possession of Monspeed's. Elizabeth and the Allied forces look on in shock and fear as Esterosa changes aspects once again, presenting himself as the Great Meliodas. As the visibly disturbed demon looms towards Elizabeth, Gila tells her to escape, but unfortunately Esterosa attacks and easily beats her, while Deanne and King try an offense-defense strategy to stop him to no avail. Elizabeth shouts to stop them, and then she gives herself up to Esterosa to avoid more bloodshed. After telling everyone to keep Derriere safe, Esterosa then takes her away to the sky. There, Elizabeth questions him as to where he's taking her, to which he responds to her as if he was actually Meliodas, that it's the place they would go to when they didn't want anyone to see them. She then takes notice of the environment. She realizes that they're in the Heavens Theater. She remarks that it's such an old place that no one would go there except she and Meliodas when they would meet in secret. She expresses how much she longs for Meliodas, to which Esterosa, back to his senses, reveals that he always watched them in secret. Creepy. Elizabeth is able to remember a little about Esterosa, and he claims that the only ones who never laughed at him were Meliodas and Elizabeth. Esterosa reveals that Meliodas once told him that he was going to try to see if he could work things out with Elizabeth for him. Elizabeth says that his memories must be wrong, since Meliodas would never say such a thing. However, when recalling a conversation with Meliodas at Heaven's Theater, he tells her that Zeldris is his only brother. Without understanding, Elizabeth recalls his memory with Esterosa as a child, where he asks the name of the dog she brings with her, telling him that Meliodas had decided to name it Esterosa. Confused, Elizabeth begins to recover her true memories that had been altered by Gother's spell 3,000 years ago. The image of Esterosa becomes blurred and is replaced with that of a young Mael. Unable to believe it, Elizabeth realizes that the true identity of Esterosa, quotation marks, is Mael. As Mael uncovers the truth about himself, the darkness that was holding Elizabeth captive begins to crumble, freeing her. But remaining unconscious while Mael goes berserk, fighting against the other archangels, Gother and King. Derriere then wakes her up and she cries over the fact that Esterosa was Mael all this time. She says that she wants to save his heart, but not even her magic power can purge the darkness within and remove the commandments. Derriere tells Elizabeth to remain there and reassures her that she has a plan. Elizabeth watches as Derriere's plan commences, only for Tarmiel to fall into Mael's trick, which in turn gets Derriere killed. Elizabeth rushes over, but it's too late, as she's already dead and her commandment is removed from her body. Elizabeth says that she won't let Derriere's death be in vain, and that she'll end the New Holy War, stop Mael, and most importantly, save Meliodas. Hawk asks Elizabeth what that light orb in the sky is, and Elizabeth says it's like a cocoon and it's due to Mael, who already struggled to absorb the Three Commandments, trying to absorb a fourth. With the cocoon, Mael shoots a shower of light and darkness beams all over the theater, catching Sariel and Tarmiel within the range, which surprises Elizabeth. She screams, but she doesn't have any time to react. Gother throws King to Hawk, and Elizabeth starts to heal him. While doing so, one of the light beams from Mael is about to hit Elizabeth, but Gother sacrifices one of his arms to stop the attack. The doll stands with a new resolve, prepared to fight against Mael. Elizabeth heals King, and then a portal opens, revealing Oslo, which reveals Deanne, who uses heavy metal to block Mael's attacks, and is then informed of the situation. Mael's transformation is then completed, and he reveals a new form, to which Hawk comments that his power level is above 200,000, and makes Elizabeth say that everyone should just run. 
Mael uses his love commandment and combines it with his light magic, blasting away Elizabeth and everyone else, making everyone feel all gloomy and they can't even feel their injuries. Gother uses his sense opener that restores them to their senses, and they all jump above Mael and Elizabeth heals Deanne and King's injuries instantly, and the two along with Gother combine their magic in one big attack on Mael. As Mael manages to counter their efforts with the power of the commandments, Elizabeth is worried. When Deanne and King's magic is sealed by Mael's scythe of reticence, Elizabeth hurries to heal Deanne's wound and release her from the cursed seal. After Oslo sacrifices himself to protect everyone for Mael's light ball of love, Elizabeth manages to heal Deanne and release her magic just in time for her to use Gideon's special ability Lightning Rod to nullify Mael's light ball of love by redirecting it to the Earth. When Hawk asks why she's never used this technique before, Elizabeth explains that the redirected energy causes severe damage to the Earth and the creature that lives on it. After Deanne redirects a second light ball, the Heavens Theater is destroyed and everyone begins to fall into the void. Elizabeth calls for her goddess wings to catch Deanne, but she asks her to save King, who's unable to fight with his magic sealed. As Elizabeth begins to lose altitude due to Deanne's weight, Deanne asks her to leave her and escape, but Elizabeth refuses. There, Mael appears behind Elizabeth, but before he can hurt her, King pushes him away, revealing his new form and fully grown wings, to the great surprise of Deanne and Elizabeth. Elizabeth comments that King's magic power is vast and calm like the water of a blue lake. When Mael releases another light ball, King protects Elizabeth and Deanne with True Form 8, Pollen Garden. Elizabeth is surprised as King is able to use the different empowered forms of Chastafall at the same time. As Mael is overpowered by King and begins to suffer for the commandments, Elizabeth cries for him to wake up and return to his true self. After Gother enters inside Mael's soul and succeeds in releasing him from the commandment's influence, Elizabeth cries of happiness as Mael returns to his original form. After returning to the ground, Deanne, King, Elizabeth, and Hawk contemplate the terrible release of demon power from Camelot. While Elizabeth says they must go there to help their friends from what terrible thing must be happening, a strange light comes out of Hawk's eyes, revealing to be Bun, who has finally returned from Purgatory. Elizabeth is happy to see him safe and asks for Meliodas, to which Bon says that he's on his way. Bon tells the companions that they should go to where Meliodas is and that he'll reach them after finishing a pending issue. Meanwhile, because of the whole everything that happened, Mael's thinking that maybe he shouldn't be fighting for the Goddess Clan. But Mael asks him to share his strength with them, not for the victory of the Goddess Clan, but to end the Holy War. At the end, with her pleasure, Mael goes along with Elizabeth and the others to Camelot. On their way, the group feels another great magic power reaching Camelot, revealed to be the Four Commandments that Mael had expelled, who are coming to rejoin with the Five that Meliodas possesses. Upon reaching Camelot, Elizabeth, along with Deanne and King, helps Ludosiel to protect Merlin from Zeldris's Dark Matter. Elizabeth asks Merlin how much time is required to complete the Chrono Coffin, to which Merlin says that she needs five minutes to complete it and suspend Meliodas's cocoon in time. When Zeldra starts to attack under desperation to stop Merlin, Elizabeth and her allies try to defend her, but King uses True Pollen Garden to protect everyone. After Zeldris is defeated by Mael and the Chrono Coffin is completed, Elizabeth celebrates with her friends the end of the Holy War, congratulating Merlin and thanking Hendrickson for what he did for Margaret and Gilthunder, revealing that King had been watching everything through Chastafall. Despite knowing that her curse will kill her one day, Elizabeth says that she only wishes for Meliodas to be safe and unharmed. However, when Hawk discovers that the cocoon was already empty, everyone, along with Elizabeth, is interrupted by incredible darkness coming from a Meliodas now turned Demon King. Elizabeth wonders if this one is really Meliodas. When whoever this is that appears to be Meliodas flatters her in the Sin's efforts, Hawk and Elizabeth realize who's before her. Whoever it is, it isn't Meliodas, and she demands to know who he is. Zeldris reveals that he is, in fact, the Demon King, who has taken over possession of Meliodas' body through the Commandments. Elizabeth demands that he leave the body of Meliodas, and Hawk asks how he can do that to his own son, to which the Demon King says it's so as to not waste his true potential. The Demon King says that he'll free Elizabeth from his curse, but only be able to kill her brutally, wondering what face Meliodas will put on him when he sees her corpse, and if he'll become depressed and want to join her in the afterlife, or perhaps be relieved of not being held back by her. After Gother saves Elizabeth from the Demon King's murderous attack, he takes her with Merlin to be protected by her perfect cube, along with Hendrickson and Escanor. King, Deanne, and Mael attack the Demon King with physical attacks, knowing that magic doesn't work against him, but the Demon King easily defends himself from all of their attacks and incapacitates everyone with a simple movement, including Elizabeth and those under the perfect cube. He states that the resistance is useless and that Elizabeth must let him end her miserable life for good. Hawk begins to provoke him and warns him not to kill Elizabeth. The Demon King destroys Hawk's little perfect cube with his claw, heavily wounding him, saying that it's very irritating and that he'll send him to where his brother is. 
Elizabeth cries for Hawk being killed, however Hawk is snatched from his clutch by Bond, who states to take the Demon King out of Meliodas' body. As the Demon King releases a storm over the area, Elizabeth and the Sins are protected by King's true pollen garden. Elizabeth asks Deanne if everyone is fine, but she says that Bond is still outside. After hearing Hawk and that the storm has been stopped by Bond, Elizabeth seems to be happy to feel Meliodas fighting the Demon King from the inside. Seeing Bond fight the Demon King, Elizabeth praises him and Meliodas. There, Gother comes up with a plan and manages to use his invasion to take Elizabeth and the other Sins into the spiritual world where Meliodas confronts the Demon King. Elizabeth cries as she and her friends are finally reunited with the real Meliodas. Elizabeth tells him not to surrender and that they'll be his strength. When meeting, Elizabeth can finally tell Meliodas that she loves him, and Meliodas asks her if he looks older after having spent a millennium in purgatory. Elizabeth and the others are protected from the Demon King both by Meliodas in the spiritual world and Ludociel in the real world. Meliodas proceeds to attack his father with as many small spheres of concentrated darkness as he can, penetrating the armor and wounding him. As Meliodas gains new strength from his friends and becomes able to overpower the Demon King, he asks them to go back and help Bon. As they return to the real world, Merlin recognizes that the Demon King is in a desperate death throw, pretending to take Meliodas with him in his demise. Merlin states that they must get rid of the Demon King from Meliodas' body right now. Bon manages to intercept and stop his death throws and then send him flying with a kick. King Elizabeth and Merlin then use their combined technique, Triple Prison, leaving the Demon King trapped. It, however, manages to break free in a berserk state. Then, Deanne surprises him with Diamond Tower, giving Bond the opening to deliver the final blow. With a strong fist that sends the Demon King to break the diamond, it's finally defeated and erased from the body of Meliodas. Elizabeth is glad to see Meliodas finally back in his body, welcoming him back. Elizabeth goes with the rest of the Sins to heal Meliodas and Bond's bodies. When Ludociel states that this is still the first step for the Demon Clan and the Goddess Clan to unite after hating each other for so long, Elizabeth approaches and says that she never expected to hear those words coming from him. Ludociel admits that he was also fed up with that senseless war. Ludociel finally vanishes, and Elizabeth thanks him as he sacrificed himself for all of this and wishes that he find peace. Despite their victory, the Sins are saddened with the destruction of the Demon King. They've missed the opportunity to break Elizabeth's curse. She tells them that this is already done, and that what she wanted most was for Meliodas to be the same, since she would never see him again if he became the Demon King. Elizabeth says that she can always reincarnate if she dies, but Merlin asks if she's really okay with that. There, Meliodas surprises everyone by claiming that he acquired the power to break the curse while escaping from Purgatory. Despite the dissonance of this and Bond, Merlin uses her curse Discovery for the curses of Meliodas and Elizabeth to take physical form. There, Meliodas assumes the appearance that he had when he was the Demon King and tells Elizabeth that despite having made her wait 3,000 years, he's finally going to fulfill the promise he made her. Elizabeth asks if he'll continue to love her forever after completing her, to which Meliodas assures that he'll do so until she gets tired of him first. Meliodas easily destroys the two curses, and with that Elizabeth embraces him with joy since his long journey has ended, but is then rectified knowing that their trip together has only just begun. Demon King Arc with the end of the Holy War, Elizabeth returns along with the Sins to Leonis, and that night all attend to the celebration in the new boar hat. There, Elizabeth has a good time with her father and Margaret. She later serves the table along Escanor for Meliodas and Bond to take a break. The day after the end of the Holy War, Elizabeth joins the Sins in the boar hat for their journey of stalking up across Britannia. As they make up a picnic, Elizabeth remains with Merlin, Deanne, and Elaine while all the men are going for food in the forest. Deanne starts to talk about their future children and how cute Elizabeth and Meliodas' will be, to which Elizabeth says that she's rushing things. Elaine tries to change the subject, but then Deanne wonders that if Meliodas becomes Leona's royalty, if he would rather just be an innkeeper rather than their captain. Cause then anybody could just go see him whenever they want. As Deanne finally breaks down in tears, not wanting it to be true that Meliodas is going to leave them, which is something that everybody is acutely aware of at this point, Merlin tries to tell the truth to Elizabeth. She's then surprised that Elizabeth reveals that she already knows Meliodas' condition, but that she's fine with it. Deanne exclaims how could she be fine with the fact that the one she loves is going to disappear from the world? Elizabeth says that if Meliodas forces himself to stay, it'll be trouble and that there's nothing to do about it. Deanne says that this is heartless. While their trip is resumed, Elizabeth worries that everyone is quiet and depressed. Gother and Merlin realize that they're not actually heading to Leonis, and Meliodas reveals that he intends to make a stop a little earlier, in what remains of Edinburgh Castle. Meliodas asks everyone to wait while he goes, but Elizabeth decides to accompany him. 
The two fly into the huge crater created 12 years ago where they find a large sphere of darkness, revealing itself to be where the vampire Gelda was sealed by Meliodas. Meliodas releases Gelda from the seal, to which she laments how she wished it were Zeldris who would be the one to do it. As she's about to fall into despair, Meliodas interrupts her and quickly tells her how Zeldris really wanted to see her and that she was his only hope. She responds that, although they love each other, what he really wanted to do was be the new Demon King. Meliodas confirms this, explaining how Zeldris wanted to be the new Demon King to create a peaceful system so he and Gelda could be together without any repercussions from anyone. Gelda notes that Meliodas is referring to Zeldris in the past tense and asks where he is now. Meliodas answers that Zeldris went missing after the battle with the Demon King. After learning this, Gelda leaves to go find him herself, stating that she doesn't care where he is in this world and asks if Elizabeth can understand where she's coming from. Elizabeth questions how she knows her, and Gelda tells her that there's no one that doesn't know her name in the magical realm. Upon returning to Leonis, Elizabeth goes with her friends to a meeting organized by King Bartra. There, he asks Meliodas to marry Elizabeth and become the king. Bartra ensures that Elizabeth will have no objection, but she says that she can't accept. Everyone is stunned when Elizabeth reveals that she plans to go to the demon realm with Meliodas. Meliodas is reluctant to this, claiming to regret it now that she's human. However, Elizabeth says that she's determined to do it. At night, Elaine helps Elizabeth prepare her things for her departure to the demon realm. Elaine asks if she'll be fine with only a backpack, to which Elizabeth says that she'll discover how to do things in the demon realm when she gets there. Elaine then asks Elizabeth, is she not concerned about any of the actions she's taking? And Elizabeth said she'd be lying if she said no, but, you know, it'll all work out. Elizabeth says that with her curse broken, she just wants to live her last life with Meliodas, but that she's saddened to have to leave her family and friends forever. Elaine tells her that she's glad that she's chosen this path. Although it depresses her to never see her again, Elaine assures Elizabeth that they'll be friends forever. The next day, Elizabeth has an emotional farewell at the entrance to the Demon Realm. After promising her father to live happily and to assure Deanne that they'll always be friends, Elizabeth goes to the entrance, thinking that she won't look back and that she does not regret anything she did up until then. So from then on, she'll always look ahead with Meliodas. However, before crossing the entrance, a gigantic rock detaches from a nearby boulder and falls onto Elizabeth, seemingly crushing her to death. Everyone, especially Meliodas, can't help but look with horror at the fact that the curse hadn't been broken at all. However, Elizabeth is saved at the last minute by Merlin, who teleports her to safety just in time. Merlin then uses Curse Discovery to reveal that Elizabeth's curse was restored. Meliodas tries to destroy it once more, but as soon as he does, the curse regenerates again. Meliodas concludes that this is because the curse was put by the Demon King, and it continues to exist because the Demon King is still alive. When everyone wonders how it can be given that the Commandments have no vessel, Elizabeth and Meliodas conclude that Zeldris, the only one besides Meliodas capable of resisting the Commandments, has become the vessel of the Demon King. Elizabeth and the Sins return to the Boar Hat to discuss the situation. When Merlin asks who can be the new vessel of the Demon King, Meliodas claims to not know, although he's already figured out that it's Zeldris. There, everyone feels that the entrance to the Demon Realm is being opened again to invoke an Endura Demon. While Hawk and Escanor report the situation to the King, the other Sins decide to go face the Demon while Meliodas stays to protect Elizabeth. Once alone, Elizabeth asks him why he didn't tell them about Zeldris being the Demon King's vessel. Meliodas says that this is a family matter and he doesn't want to involve them. Meliodas is conflicted that he can't leave her alone, and Elizabeth tells him to go and gives him his lost vein that she was saving all this time. As Meliodas reaffirms that he can't leave her, Elizabeth declares that she'll go with him, since everything that concerns him concerns her. When the two leave, Meliodas remembers how Elizabeth was always at his side, giving him courage and being his light, everything that made him fall in love with her. The two then fly on the way to rescue Zeldris. On the way, Elizabeth asks Meliodas if they're going to where the Demon King awaits them, to which Meliodas says they're going to Lake Salisbury, the greatest concentration of magic in Britannia, where the Demon King must be recovering the power he lost in the battle against the Sins to get the full assimilation of the vessel. Elizabeth assures him that Zeldris is waiting for him and that they can save him. Upon reaching the lake, Meliodas and Elizabeth find the Demon King with whom they confront. After a short exchange with Meliodas, the Demon King launches a blast of darkness that doesn't hit Meliodas but raises a cloud of steam from the water that gives him the cover to catch Elizabeth and take her hostage. The Demon King boasts of his error in bringing her, and that given his desire to protect her at all costs now that her curse is reactivated, he only has to use her as a shield until he regains the power of his original being. 
However, Elizabeth laughs that he's wrong if he thinks she came only to put a burden on Meliodas, and that she came to defeat him as well. Elizabeth then wraps him in her Ark. The Demon King claims that this pathetic technique won't affect him, but Elizabeth uses Manipulate and Burst and shakes him all over the place, finally using a big explosion that leaves him wounded. Meliodas warns him that he'll know a world of pain if he underestimates Elizabeth, just like he did himself long ago, reminding him of the name they used to give her in the Underworld, Bloodstained Ellie. As the darkness comes out of his body, the Demon King says that Meliodas is so concerned about his brother that he's not using his full power, and in fact, his original power as Demon King is recovering and increasing thanks to the Magic Lake. The Demon King emerges from the flames with a new and even more powerful body. Suddenly, the Demon King notices that something is approaching at high speed. This turns out to be the heads of the Endura that Bond, Deanne, King, and Gother and Merlin had launched towards him. Meliodas wonders why they're there, and Elizabeth says that they've come for him. With the arrival of the Five, Bond reminds Meliodas the seventh rule of the Seven Deadly Sins, come together and work as a team, every now and then. As the Demon King is taken aback, Merlin tells Gother to take Meliodas inside the Demon King's soul and detach him from Zeldris while they distract him. As Gother takes Meliodas into the spirit world, Elizabeth is protected along Deanne and their bodies in Merlin's perfect cube. When King, Bon, and Escanor are wounded by the Demon King, Elizabeth asks Merlin to release her perfect cube. Deanne remarks the risk of this curse, but Elizabeth insists. Merlin does it, and Elizabeth uses Invigorate to heal the three fighters. Bon recriminates her actions, but Elizabeth tells him to focus on the fight. A sudden whirlpool sucks Elizabeth and separates Deanne and the others from her, as a lightning bolt is about to fall over the princess. Fortunately, Meliodas returns from the spirit world just in time to full counter the lightning and redirect it to the Demon King. Elizabeth takes charge of Gelda's body for Gother to join his fellow sins. Deanne manages to cut the Demon King off from the lake, and thus basically his source of magic. When Escanor faces the Demon King as the One, his minute passes without defeating his foe. The Demon King proceeds to bury a blow to Escanor in the womb, but surprisingly, Escanor's power doesn't diminish despite having spent his maximum time as the One. Deanne and King wonder how this is possible, but Meliodas reveals that Escanor is turning his own vital force into magic power, basically burning his own life. As the Seven Deadly Sins put the Demon King to his limit, Gelda suddenly wakes up in Elizabeth's arm, crying for Zeldris as the commandments start to leave his body. When the Demon King stands against them in a new and gigantic and monstrous vessel created from the same land of Britannia, Elizabeth contemplates along with Gelda and Zeldris how the Sins are going to combine their powers to destroy the Demon King once and for all. But, you know, they manage to. While everyone watches Zeldris and Gelda fly away, Escanor says it's time for him to do the same because everyone is waiting for him. But, you know, metaphorically speaking. Of course, everyone has already seen that Escanor is about to die since his body has been burned to the point that it's disintegrating and can no longer move. Escanor says he has no regrets in his life and thanks everyone for allowing him to meet them. He gives each person a few last words, he asks Elizabeth to give regards to the king and the rest in Leonis. Elizabeth shows confusion when Merlin says that she wishes to have met Escanor 3,000 years ago, but right now, it's too late to do anything. Epilogue Arc The Sins reunite in the streets of Leonis as they decide to part in their own ways. Deanne and Elizabeth talk about how wonderful a kingdom of fairies and giants will be. After everyone leaves, Elizabeth realizes that she's back to the beginning of her journey, alone with Meliodas and Hawk. She says that even though it's only been a year, she feels like she's been with the Sins her whole life, and Meliodas says that it's because too much has happened. When Hawk decides to go to Purgatory to make his brother a grave, Elizabeth tells him that he's a kind soul. When Meliodas and Elizabeth return to the castle, Bartra is pleased that Meliodas has decided to agree to marry Elizabeth and succeed him as king. However, he's very upset when Meliodas doesn't pay attention to the responsibilities he'll have as king, and that the only thing that worries him is going on a honeymoon with Elizabeth. Eighteen months later, Elizabeth and Meliodas have become king and queen, and she awaits the birth of their first child. She comments with Meliodas the reactions of Zeldris and Gelda when they find out, since they never before conceived a demon and a goddess, although she is part human. While Meliodas doesn't stop thinking about how to name the baby, he decides to call him Tristan, and Elizabeth says that he has a great future waiting for him. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.